Hi everyone, welcome back to the Brem Method YouTube channel. This video is on osmotic pressure, and specifically, one of the ways that osmotic pressure can be tested on the biobiochem section of the MCAT. So let's get started. Okay, so here is a typical question that you may see about osmotic pressure on the MCAT that may not look like something you've seen before. Okay, so let's tackle this step by step. The first thing to notice is that osmoregularity is called out in the question stem. So that means that we're looking for something to do with osmotic pressure and osmosis in our answer choice. So we need to recall what osmosis is. And simply, it's the idea of water moving from one compartment to another, usually through a membrane, in order to balance out the osmolarity, or the ratio of solute to fluid, in both compartments. Our goal is to always have an even balance of solute and water on both sides of a membrane. And oftentimes, the solute cannot cross the membrane, and so the osmotic movement is done by water from one side to the other. So an easy way to remember this, my way of remembering this on test day is to say to yourself, water always follows solute. Wherever there's more solute, the water will move in that direction. And we're gonna use that base concept to establish how to answer this question today. So let's start off with a drawing of a blood vessel. Here's our blood vessel, and just a reminder, blood vessels are not just in a vacuum in space, right? They're in our body, and they're surrounded by something called the interstitium. And the interstitium is a combination of membranous material, support structures, and most importantly, fluid, right? So the, there's a whole bunch of fluid outside of our blood vessels and organs that are really kind of supporting us and balancing out the ratio of water to solute in our various blood vessels. So that interstitium, that interstitial that we're talking about, is usually very fluid filled, but should still have a balanced amount of solute to water compared to the vessel. Now in the human body, the average osmolarity is 300 milliosmoles. So that means in both the interstitium and in the blood vessels, we want to have an osmolarity of 300 milliosmoles. The exception, of course, is the kidney, where our goal is to actually increase the concentration of solute before excreting it out as urine. So in this situation, what we've done, according to the question stem, is we've increased the concentration of albumin in the bloodstream. Now, albumin is a protein. We're told it's a protein. And when we're talking about the ratio of solutes to fluid, solutes to water in osmosis, anything that's not water is usually a solute. And that includes proteins, ions, carbohydrates like sugars, right, glucose, even fats, right? Anything that's not fluid Right? Anything that's not water is going to count as a solute. doesn't matter what it is. So albumin counts as a solute. So really what we can say is we've increased the solute concentration of the compartment that is the blood vessel. So when we've increased solute concentration, that means that we've increased the osmolarity. So there's two ways to fix this, right? Either we move albumin from the blood vessel to the interstitium, or we move water, fluid, from the interstitium into the blood vessel to balance out and reestablish that 300 milliosmoles. So here's the thing that you need to remember for the MCAT. When we're talking about osmolarity, we're talking about water movement. We're not talking about solute movement. So we can say that what we're looking for is an answer about water movement, not solute movement. Because remember, osmolarity, osmosis, osmoregulation, all is to do with water movement in response to an increased solute concentration in one compartment. The albumin moving here is not our answer because that's not osmoregulation. So we can actually eliminate C. Now, let's take a look at the other answers. An increase in immune response. Does that have anything to do with osmoregulation? Maybe, 
but more likely this is what we call an out of scope answer choice right it's out of scope of the problem we're focusing on the movement of water and an immune response is not likely to be involved in osmolar regulation okay so now we have a drop in blood pressure or an influx of interstitial fluid into the bloodstream now d already says exactly what we've drawn here in our diagram, right? But let's also prove why A is actually the opposite of what's going on. Hopefully intuitively, you would think that doesn't seem right, but let's talk about why that's true. Okay, so when we increase the movement of fluid into the blood vessel, right, like we're doing here, so we're increasing fluid in, to the blood vessel. That means that we are by definition going to have an increase in blood volume, right? Volume. Increase in blood volume means that there's just more fluid in the vessels, right? Now this, by the way, just for your knowledge, this is a little out of scope of the MCAT, but this often happens on the venous side of the cardiovascular system. So what happens is, is that we increase blood volume, and then as this goes through the cardiac system, right, as this goes into the heart, we're actually going to increase our ventricular stroke volume. And this makes sense, right? Because if we're putting more blood into the heart from the venous system, we're gonna to have to have an increase in our ventricular contraction output in order to compensate for that increased volume. So we have increased stroke volume. And if you remember, cardiac output is directly related to heart rate times stroke volume. This is one of our cardiac equations. And so if we increase stroke volume, we're also gonna increase cardiac output, meaning more blood is leaving the heart to go into the arterial system, arterial system, the arteries, right? And in the arterial system, if we have increased cardiac output, more blood getting pushed out, and the artery system is a little stiffer, right? It doesn't expand as much as the venous system. We're gonna increase the pressure on those artery walls, which means we're gonna increase blood pressure. Now, you can just go ahead and memorize that if we're increasing blood volume, we're increasing blood pressure as well. I just wanted to show you how it's not a direct relationship, right? We do have to go through the whole system to make sense of it. But the end result is that we increase blood volume and therefore increase blood pressure. So let's finish this out. An increase in solute in the blood vessels equals an increase in blood volume, which has a downstream effect of increasing blood pressure. Now you can imagine that if this was chronic, right, if we consistently always had a little too much solute in our blood, for example, glucose, blood glucose, we're going to increase our blood pressure. That's why one of the symptoms of diabetes is increased blood pressure. As you know from your health classes, too high of a blood pressure has lots of downstream negative effects on your health. So you can imagine that there's gonna be many different ways that they could test this in a passage format, but the bottom line for you is to recognize when they're asking about osmosis. Look for that term, osmoregulation, osmolarity, milliosmols, and know that all you have to focus on is the movement of water in response to increased solute in one compartment. I hope this video helped to clarify osmotic pressure concepts and to show you how osmotic pressure can be tested not just in the physics section, but in the bio biochem section of the MCAT as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.